Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast, the first and longest running female hosted hunting podcast. She's all geared up and ready to chase walleyes in the middle of the night on the Wisconsin River. But first, she's helping you navigate your trip of a lifetime. And now, here's your hostess, Carrie Zilka. Welcome to the Hunt Fish Travel Podcast. I am your hostess, Carrie Z. I am on the line with Brandon Sislo from Angling Adventures, a fellow squid, so that'll be super fun to talk to him this week. We are going to be talking about fishing in Isle Royal, which I'd never even heard of until we started chatting, and some of the other places, the really unique fishing opportunity is that Angling Adventures does offer. So, Brandon, welcome to the show. Thanks, Carrie. I appreciate it, and uh, thanks for thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I'm a little. I feel like I don't have my normal like radio voice. Um, fresh off the 2023 Open Season Sportsman's Expo in the Kalahari last weekend, which was fabulous. I think I talked to 15,000 people. I swear to God. So I apologize that my voice is slightly scratchy, but I think I think it'll be okay. <laughs> so. Well, at least it kept you busy, right? Yeah, and you're going to do all the talking, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you introduce the listeners to Angling Adventures here in Wisconsin and the surrounding areas and where you're based out of? Yeah, uh, so my name is Brandon, um, and I, I started Angling Adventures here a little over a year ago. We're, we're coming into our first full season, so we've been um, setting up for some some big trips uh as as you mentioned carrie uh, isle royal is kind of the 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 big one um we we operate year round we're full-time guide service so we ice fish uh we fish through all four seasons um and we wanted to bring something a little bit extra to the table that a lot of guide services don't have and uh, uh we have trips that are overnight trips we do a little bit of fishing we do a little bit of exploring um, and we go to places that there just aren't any other options or ways to get there um, you know our isle royal trips are are as of right now exclusive to us um, it's it's something that's just not offered any other way uh, and it started over a course of uh, years of of doing these things as as a family, uh, my other half and the kids and, and everybody always said, you know, interested in seeing the pictures and seeing what we're doing and, and asking about it. And how did you find out? Um, and the answer was always simply, we went where other people don't go. (laughs) (laughs) You guys are definitely my people. (laughs) Yeah. And, and a lot of places you can go and you can hop on your generic, you know, there's there's a lot of like tour boats, or you can hop on a ferry to go to an island somewhere. Uh, but you're always wondering, you know, we always ask, what's around that next corner, or what's over the next hill. Uh, there's always so much more to it that you can't see, and it's similar to um, when you go somewhere touristy and you want to talk to the locals, like where's that secret spot, you know? Yeah. Uh, and that's that's what we're out there looking for is, is those little hidden gems. Totally. So looking, so, and for the listeners information, um, I reached out to you because you were, I think you were posting about Apostle Islands here in Wisconsin and fishing around there. And for some, I don't know, I've probably been to every, not every inch, but I feel like I've been to every inch of Wisconsin because I just love this state and it has so much to offer. But the Apostle Islands, I just I just haven't gotten up there. And I always wanted to go up during the winter when you had the ice caves and everything. Um, Do you offer ice fishing trips in that area? Yeah. So uh, as far as fishing goes, kind of uh, one, one of our major specialty is really jigging for big lake trout. Uh, Again, that's a year round thing. Um, It's a little bit challenging because we have to deal directly with uh, Lake Superior, uh, Mother Nature, and the weatherman at the same time. Um, all three things of which we can't really control very well. Um, so in the winter time, we guide in, we start off in Schwamigan Bay and we work our way out into the Apostle Islands as our safe ice and weather allows us to. Um, and with that, 
uh, you know, there's, there's the name of the business is angling adventures. So the angling is what we're based around. The adventure is kind of the cherry on top, just the, the extra part of the trip. Um, the Apostle Islands are just in a gorgeous area. Uh, if you've ever seen it in the summer, it's, it's beautiful. There's so many things to see. Uh, there's so many different ways to enjoy yourself out there. Um, in the winter time, it's equally as beautiful, if not more beautiful. Even if winter's not your season, um, the ice caves and the ice formations out there are unlike anything else um, that I've ever seen anywhere else I've ever been. Uh, and a lot of times, <clears throat> so what if we're if we're out fishing for the day, we try to incorporate that into our trips on the way back as long as it's safe to do so. Um, this year was a little challenging. Um, anybody that worked on the ice this year will tell you that it was uh, a hard winter to deal with. <laughs> Yeah. But we did get a few of them, a, a few really nice trips in this year. It was a shitty winter. Let's just call it what it was, because the amount of days I spent <laughs> ice fishing was pretty crappy. I am very disappointed <laughs> in Mother Nature this year. <laughs> but someday I would like to get up to the Apostle Islands. I just think it would be really neat. What kind of depths are you fishing? So, okay, Lake Trout, and I've done a few episodes now on Lake Trout because they've slowly become my my ice fishing obsession, but what kind of depths are you jigging at then out there? It's got to be super deep out there. It is. And, and it really depends on what we're doing because a lot of times, again, the first thing we have to deal with is, is our safe ice. Um, mm -hmm. This year, the fish uh, fishing was good. Uh, we, we were able to stay on the fish uh, relatively easily. Um, but our ice was the challenge, and sometimes it's it's the other way around. Uh, but when we're fishing lake trout specifically, typically we're targeting them anywhere between uh, 80, 90 feet on the shallow side, and anything as deep as about 250. We tr and <clears throat> we try not to go deeper than that. There's plenty of fish deeper than that, but it's it's just a lot more difficult to try to fish those depths. Sure. All right. Well, and I specifically wanted to do this interview, too, to ask you about the Isle Royal that you you briefly mentioned it. And then I looked it up and I was like, whoa, this is really interesting. I looked it up. And can you tell the listeners where Isle Royal is located and why it doesn't belong to Wisconsin, which is super annoying? <laughs> of course. Uh, I, so Isle Royal is actually a, the closest land is Canada. Um, it's, it's closer to Canada, uh, at about 15 miles, I believe at, at mm -hmm. its closest point. Um, it's closest point to the United States is actually Minnesota. And it's about 23 miles from Grand Portage, which is right at the Canadian border. Um, but Isle Royal actually belongs to Michigan and so just like most things in the, it is annoying, <laughs> 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 especially the process I have to go through being from Wisconsin to, to be able I didn't to even think about that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the the yeah, the legal side of of making these things happen is is interesting, but um so it is it's closer to Minnesota, um but just like what fuels most things in this world, uh it belongs to Michigan because of money. Um the Mid-Continental Rift is is when it collapsed, it made Lake Superior. Uh, so if you've ever been to the Keweenaw Peninsula, they have the, the sharp cliffs, and, and when they found copper and everything uh, on that side, uh, the other side of the rift is uh, Royal. So they knew when they found copper and, and minerals that were worth a lot of money on the Keweenaw Peninsula side, they knew that the other side was going to be the same way. So Michigan claimed it, <laughs> and it was all I over saw. money. I know, and I, I do joke, and I I mean, obviously, it's a lot closer to Copper Harbor or even Grand Portage than it is to Bayfield, but so, and for anybody who's ever or has not even been up in that area, it's, if you've driven up, like, through Superior or headed to Duluth, it's that, just that inlet there, and it's, it's, it's up there, it's definitely up there, yep. just south of Thunder Bay, which is pretty interesting, and I was even just kind of being nosy. I was like, oh, wow, they have, like, overnight camping. It's really inexpensive. It's $60 for a, se a season permit or whatever, and it's just 
it's really interesting. <laughs> it's just its own unique ecosystem, and it only has 19 mammal species. It's crazy. So yeah, and and as while well, you bring that up too, that's an interesting part of it. Um, so it seems like it's cheap to get there. Um, but the only way to actually get there, obviously, is by boat or plane. Uh, they run float planes, and those the schedule is set, and they start booking up solid in January. Really? Uh, so yeah, a lot of the availability to actually get the, to and from if you don't have your own private boat is fairly taken up and the camping is first come first serve so if you're not familiar with it it can be difficult to ensure that you can uh, put the whole trip together um, and then there's the lake uh, so no matter which way you go about it you have to get across the lake yeah <laughs> right well and so, those... yeah and then um, oh go ahead well just with the obviously there's no hunting on it I'm assuming I don't. It just said 19 mammals. It didn't specify which mammals. I'm assuming no deer. I mean, there could be deer. Who knows? But why? What makes the fishing around it so good? Do you think? Um, the same thing that makes every other aspect of it so good, and that's the fact that it's hard to get there. Um, most no pressure. Awesome, exactly. And most really cool areas of the lake are the areas. Um, that have been left alone. Uh, same thing with the Apostle Islands. The Apostle Islands are so cool because um, it's harder to get there. If, uh, if you don't have your own boat, uh, if you don't have a way to get there, there's no roads, um, there's no vehicles. Uh, and the same thing with Isle Royal. So there's no vehicles on the island. Uh, you brought up the, the mammals. Mm -hmm. There's no bears, there's no skunks, there's no raccoons. So all the animals that you typically have issues with when you're camping, yeah, they're not there, um, which is very cool. And then two of the most unique animals that are there that you'll hear about all the time are the wolves and the moose. Uh, yeah. And the the longest standing predator prey study in the entire world actually exists between the wolf and the moose on Isle Royal. That's crazy. And yeah, so they're very very closely monitored, um, closely studied. Uh, along with a lot of other things on the island, but everybody that goes to the island, uh, it, it gets in your soul. And you'll hear a lot of people say that. You'll never understand it until you get there. Um, but every aspect of the island is, is just different than anywhere else you've ever been. That's neat. I was just reading that there's no permanent inhabitants. It's all wild. There used to be some Scandinavian fishermen, but... Um... Apparently, the United States National Park Service booted them off. So it's it's truly wild. That's fascinating. Yes. So it's 99% designated wilderness area. Um, it's 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 very very very. Uh, it, if you need it while you're out there, <clears throat> you really need to have brought it with you because there's no guarantee you're going to be able to get it. Yeah. Um, personally, we've hiked almost every trail on the island. Um, we've circumnavigated it by boat countless times, um, and we've, we've been fishing it for years and it's just our favorite place in the world. Um, there's, there's a lot of shipwrecks out there. Um, some of them can be viewed right from the boat, right at the surface. And then we use also live scope and side scan technologies to, to view the underwater parts that we can't see. Um, we, there's a, four lighthouses out there that we view. Uh, one of them has a preservation society that's working on doing some restoration. Uh, and if, if the weather's right, and we time it out right, we're able to stop in there and, and get a tour of the, the lighthouse. Um, and uh, the fishing's phenomenal. It's uh, a world-class fishery for just about everything that exists out there. Uh, between uh, big lake trout, we've we've broken 40 pounds um, as far as wow. lake trout goes. Uh, the, there's brook trout, rainbow trout. Uh, there's very, very big pike. Uh, and some of the inland lakes hold some walleye. There's also lake trout on uh, one of the inland lakes. So if you're into into canoeing and kayaking, there's portage routes you can do. It's It's a very, very unique place. <laughs> Cool. So what does, okay, so where, 
when I'm looking at the map here, where do you meet people? Do you have a general, like, a harbor where you always meet people at the same spot? Yes, we ideally want to meet in Grand Portage. Uh, so this trip is 100% customizable, right? Uh, some people want to uh, some people want to do more sightseeing. Some people want to do more fishing. Um, and so if you want, you can fly to the island. We can get you on a float plane and you can fly out uh, where you'll meet us on the island. Uh, if you want to take a boat out from the Key and offside, uh, you can hop on the Ranger 3. Uh, you can hop on the Queen out of Copper Harbor. It just just depends on how you want to do your trip. And a lot of those, when we plan these trips, we like to start with a three day, a four day, three overnight. Uh, and then we like to fill in the blanks from there because that gives us a weather day if we need to. Uh, again, we're dealing with the lake, which uh, you, you just can't fight the lake. Um, so we so we start with that and then we go over meal, uh, all the meals inclusive trips. So we go over um, all the main meals for the days to make sure that uh, there's no food allergy issues or, or anything that we need to deal with and that <clears throat> that's all set. And then we start looking at the activities you want to do. And nine times out of 10, there, we do a lot of the same things, just how much of what um, is, is dependent on, on what you want to go for. So some people want to fish more, We'll set up the whole trip, uh, you know, right specific for chasing that trophy like trout. Um, some people like to do a little bit more sightseeing and exploring. <clears throat> do you, how many, how many uh, boats do you have or ships do you have in your fleet? Is it just, uh, we run one boat. Yep, one, one boat. And we run, yeah, and we run a, it, it's about a 22 foot boat. Uh, okay. And we run that boat. We would like to add one. Uh, it's, it's hard to do cause you can't find captains. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. uh, we would like to add one. The hard part about it too, is we need to see how this takes off. So we currently are the only private, um, commercial permit authorized by Isle Royal to run these trips. Uh, so right now we are one of one, uh, that may change as time goes on, but right now that's, that's how we're operating. And trying to find the balance between, uh, like I said, we're the, we're running these all inclusive. So once we leave the dock, uh, the only thing that you could spend money on are, are uh, in the gift shop and such on the island. So there's a lot of times where we'll put three to four hundred miles on by water by the time our four days is done if the weather is good. Uh, so if we start getting into too big of a boat, we start uh, either either becoming even more expensive. Yeah. Or it, it makes it impossible to do some of the things we want to do. Well, and let's talk about that. Is it is it just like a flat fee day rate or um, does it vary a lot? What sort of pricing are we looking at here? So the cost for the for the trips, uh, like I said, we base it around three nights, four days. Um, and we start off with, a you know, one to two people is the same and you're looking usually about 4,000 to $4,500, okay. um, depending on if you get it, you know, if you get in ahead of time or if you schedule during the season. Um, and it sounds like a lot of money, uh, but right now we've been doing 45 to five grand for three people really it comes out for a four day trip with everything included about $1,500 a person for three people um, is what we've found. And that's not when a that's lot your, of money. It's not a lot no, of money that's, you add in food and hotel and permits and gas, it's gas, good Lord, you know? Yeah. It's your lodging, your mm -hmm. food. Um, and, and the other part that a lot of people don't realize until we get there is when we get to the Island and we put gas in, and they see that it's three or four times what it costs yeah, on the right, mainland. Yeah, gas, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not kidding. Well, so, and even just, and, um, just time away from your family. And, you know, you, it's not like you just work your eight hours and go home. So. Yep, yep. And and these days end up being very long. We maximize. I'm not a, I'm not a start up and shut down time kind of guy. 
um, when we go out there, we're out there enjoying it together. You know, I, I absolutely love it. I'm looking for something that I didn't find the last time. Um, it's, it's really, it's really a cool place. Uh, and some people, you know, like to stay up at night for the Northern lights. Some people want to get up early and, and, and get exploring or fishing or whatever it is. Um, the other unique thing is for the most part, um, you said hotel, (laughs) <laughs> or so well yeah a, lodging <laughs> there is a lodge on the north side of the island um hmm. but we primarily stay in these three side three sided shelters that they provide okay uh so it is we have cots sleeping bags and we stay in these shelters and um so it is it is wow. still you know that remote you, you know feeling yeah, to really it it's not North canadian experience almost like which it, is, it's oh, just so like cool. that. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the people, uh, like friends and family that I've had out there in the past, when they first show up to the island, their description is, uh, you know, in the beginning of Jurassic Park, when they're showing up to the island and it's just these great big cliffs and mountains. And like, that's what they, they kind of tell me is they feel like it's Jurassic Park. That's neat. That's so cool. What? So interesting. It's just, I... I can't believe I've never heard of this place. I've never, I guess I've never really explored that far north into Superior or, you know, just up along the Canadian border there. And I guess I should more as a Wisconsin cheerleader. Shame on me. But anyhow. <laughs> um, so, and aside from I, Isle Royal and um, the Apostle Islands, where else do you take people fishing or do you have these kind of excursions to? In the springtime, um, so we, we kind of shift off Lake Superior as our ice goes away. Uh, and like right now, we're walleye fishing on the Bay of Green Bay. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I grew up in Marinette, just north of Green Bay. Okay. Uh, and that's, that's kind of my home water. So it's kind of a <clears throat> step back um and and chase the fish we chased growing up so it's kind of a a little bit less exciting but it's if you're the average fisherman that wants to catch a lot of walleyes uh this is definitely the time to do it yeah cool very 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 cool well now it's very very now different get out of credit <laughs> so thanks for that yeah because this is just fascinating your website is anglingadventures.co. I'm assuming all the information is there in case somebody wants to call you up or send you an email, even inquiring or have questions. Your website's really nice, by the way. It's really user friendly, just an FYI. Oh, which I always thank appreciate. you. <laughs> yep, I I do have the booking site shut down right now. I'm having a little bit of background issues, but um, the website does have a lot of the information and and all of the contact information you would need to to get a hold of me. Neat. All right. Well, um, let's see. Oh yeah, and f- what are you, I'm looking here? Bear with me, folks and listeners who are like, what is she doing? I see a Facebook tab. <laughs> Do you have any any other social media um, accounts? Why don't you run through any of the social media platforms? Okay, sure. I So I do run Facebook. Uh, I haven't gotten into the other ones just because it gets to be a lot. And I, um, I, that's not the part of the job I enjoy, I'll tell you that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Angling Adventures, um, we – I have uh, that page runs to be uh, informative and sort of a blog for a lot of the adventures. I have a lot of friends and family uh, and people that do similar things on their own that enjoy following along uh, that maybe necessarily wouldn't be interested in in paying somebody to do the trip. Um, Everybody is welcome to follow that page. Uh, It's a little less sales pitchy, um, not uh, not as business oriented, I guess you would say. There'll be a little advertising, but it's it's more of a fun page. And then Angling Adventures Guide Service is a page that I run specifically for the business. Uh, oh, and that okay. one is more into the fishing side of things, more into the, the trips, the advertising. Um, so yeah, I, I run those two pages a little bit a little bit differently. And uh, that's all we have for social media at the at the moment. Awesome. That's all right. And I will uh, 
I will link to both of those pages. Good that you mentioned both of them because I was only on the one. I'll, I'll, I'll link to both of them in the show notes of this episode, which can always be found on huntfishtrouble.com and in the show notes of any whatever podcast listening app you might be listening with so <laughs> that people can find both of them. Awesome. Well, well thank you, Carrie. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty interesting. I just, I don't know. I'm just absolutely fascinated by this whole Isle Royal thing. <laughs> like, I know, I know anybody listening is like, ah, she says that in every episode, but this one I really, really, really am. So. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of people are, are a lot like you and they, they never have heard of it. And it's one of them places that I think once you look it up, it just, you keep digging. Like, right? Does it end? You know, You're there's like, just. Whoa. <laughs> it is. <clears throat> yep, well, there cool. is so much. And it, it is, uh, it is one of them deals too where, you know, it's, it's like you left to a different world. My favorite part, I use a Garmin inReach so that if we have any emergencies that, or anybody needs to check in on the mainland, we can. But it's great. My favorite part of going there is our cell phones don't work. There's no internet. There's no, it's like you're cut off from the entire world. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, I'm definitely, um, even looking through the Angling Adventures Guide Service Facebook page, dude, I'm going to be chatting you up come ice fishing season. Or, I mean, yeah, ice fishing. Sorry, I'm so distracted by these photos. <laughs> <laughs> There's a really big fish you guys got. Oh my god! And yeah, yeah I we come we all and book with you. This is gonna be so great. We like we like the trophy, you know, the trophy fisheries. Mm-hmm. So uh, even even some people don't want to do a, a real long trip, but yeah, Standard Rock is another place. A lot of it again is weather dependent, but we really like doing that above and beyond kind of a trip. Uh, and if if anybody out there had any sort of uh, idea of something that they wanted to do that they don't see that uh on the list we are always down to go explore something new so um we we can always talk about a trip that we've never done as long as we can legally operate there we can figure out what it would cost and 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 put something down and we'd be game for it (laughs) that's very cool have gear will travel well, cool. Well, I'm the, glad you are chasing your dreams. That's very, very, very cool. And like I said, I've yeah. got uh, just a couple episodes ahead of this one, so it'll be just a couple of weeks. And then I will tag you on Facebook when it's live. Absolutely. And I cool. I appreciate it again. Good yeah. time. If you ever want to get up there, just, you know, get you in for – just try to slide it in sure, to an totally. area where the – you know, yep. where it's all uh, – I gotcha. That's awesome. I appreciate cool. that. All right. All right. Thanks, Carrie. You take care. You too. Bye. Bye.